Welcome to Date with Danu right here on High TV, your luxury channel. Once again, we meet on this set to speak about some interesting things. Today on the show, I'm going to be speaking about law, family, relationships, and also politics. All this and more as we move on with the show. My name is Faiza Maka. I'm a lawyer by profession. I practice in the appellate court. Hi, my name is Alea Maka. I'm a lawyer by profession and the CEO of the Tutory. We are here yeah. to go on, on a date, date with, with Danu. Danu. Hi, I'm Faiza Mustafa. It's always a pleasure to be on a date with Danu. He has so much of charm and he's all, he always brings social issues to the best. Thank you, Danu, for inviting me. So gracious of you. You're a household name. I have watched all your shows. You are known for your wit and for your varied interests. Same way, likewise. Thank you so much for having us on, our, on your show. It was so much fun having you at the tutory lecturing my students and I think today's episode would be as fun being, being around you and being interviewed by you. My daughter knows you and she talks a lot about you so I feel I know you. Looking forward to the show. Welcome to the show. So I have uh, a few very familiar faces. We have Faisa Mustafa. Then I have Faisa. Got it? Yes. And I have Zuli. Please let's start off with one thing as you're the elder one out of... You're the elder one out of the... No, you're the elder one. I'm elder I'm but so not confused. very much older. <laughs> <laughs> not very much older. Yes. Tell me in terms of creative names, your family went short. I know it has caused a lot of confusion yeah. because my dad is Faiz, I'm Faiza and he's Pfizer. My brother's analysis on that is that it's good, better, best. Oh, yes. He becomes the best. He becomes the best. Uh -huh. I disagree. Right. <laughs> and uh, your thoughts, Pfizer? Uh, that's like what I said. I mean, I think there was a lack of creativity. <laughs> And it has ca caused absolute chaos in the legal profession. Yeah. When you mark my appearance, but sometimes my dad's name is marked instead of mine when they take proceeding. <laughs> uh. So it's, a, it's absolute chaos. So Especially this having all of us practice in the legal profession. And also, like, how do you all call each other at home? We say dad, mom, sis. So ah, that way it's easier. No? It's outsiders that have problems. Yeah, that is true. And I'm but sure if somebody is asking for someone, the other one will be going. It's a big problem. Definitely. Actually, recently they referred to me as Pfizer Marka. And they thought that I was his wife. Actually, there were a lot of thoughts here as well. They said, is the husband and wife sitting together and the child sitting away? And I'm like, no. <laughs> that's, a, uh, that's a bit of a bit of a concern. But you have another brother? No. no just the two of you. One of a kind. Wa oh. <laughs> Fine. And uh, you gave birth to? Two girls. And uh, you didn't want to rhyme their names? Zuleha and Zainab. Uh, that's so much better. And both are lawyers. Yeah. Uh, Y'all have a problem. Y'all never wanted to choose anything beyond that. Only one. Your daughter. I have a daughter doing medicine as well. Uh, one daughter is a lawyer God. and one daughter is doing medicine. Th so. Thank God. Because, you know, the pressures <laughs> of law can be cured by your daughter. I think so. Yeah. She can that's be true. the doctor for the entire family. Correct. That's, that's, a, that's a good solution. Tell me, about, a tell me about coming up or growing up in a family they predominantly wore black. It was interesting. Could never argue my way out of getting into trouble. So, but one thing my grandma, one rule was we can't discuss law at the oh. table at home. Ah. Dining, table. Dining table. Right. And she's the judge. So whatever she goes, what we she all says goes. what she says goes. So right. I think that balanced it out. For that. So who was the favorite? Son or the daughter? I think it's me. But he says it's him. He has just got, he is just sitting there and giving me a look, <laughs> saying, figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Mothers always like the sons more. That's true. Sorry. He's not denying it. Yeah, he's, he's, not, not, he's, not, he's, not, he's just, not denying it. He's just looking it. through, he's like, yeah, yes, I know he's this. He's not denying <laughs> it. <laughs> Been there, answered this question yes, many yes. times. Um, this passion for law, where does it come from? Like it has been now, three generations have gone, four, four generations. Four generations. Four generations have gone through it. My grandfather also was a lawyer. Right. My father is a lawyer, as you know, and my brother. 
So most of us are lawyers. And also when I was little, I used to spend a lot of time in my dad's chambers and my grandfather's chambers. Right. And I used to travel with my dad outstation because he was a crown counsel. And I used to watch the proceedings in these outstation courts. Mm. He used to, I used to accompany him a lot. And I was just fascinated. And I always wanted to be a lawyer. Right, okay. But it has, uh, but there's such a huge market for law in terms of the business framework. But actually, who, the ones who are out there practicing in a court, there's not so many. That's true. Very few ladies. Why is that? It's a male-dominated profession. It's okay. very difficult to okay. make it. It's you, not as easy as you think. I mean, it's not what you see on TV. It's and not yes, sort of seen suits. That's yeah. true. It's very cutthroat as well. Okay. And no substitution for hard work. And uh, Pfizer, do you think women don't have a place in that? No, I think it's a, it's a tough challenge for a woman because Sri Lanka is a male chauvinistic society. So I think, unfortunately, we don't have women in parliament as well. Yeah, true. So women generally have more confidence in men than their own kind. So yeah. that's primarily the reason. But I think in court, people see getting a man to appear for them has uh, more authority. More authority. Kind of. uh, that's true. That's, that's mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that's the case. Yeah, because I also know that some of the most popular divorce lawyers are men. Yeah, <laughs> because divorce lawyers generally, it's a drama. Divorce is a drama in oh, court. Right. So, I mean, it's washing your dirty linen in public. Right. So, I think they feel men do a better job than women. women <laughs> do. <laughs> and also, Danu, if I may interrupt, when a woman appears in court, it's very difficult because you're supposed to be feminine and also appear for your client and in the best interest of your client, you have to be aggressive at times. Yeah. So you have to strike a balance, which is also a bit difficult. Now, they are brought in colours, right? Yes. To court? It was always there. Ah, oh, okay. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, no, uh, you can omit saris now. Yes, you can. Right. Yes, yeah. you can. Yes. Yeah. Suits. Uh, frocks, suits. Suits. Wow. So in suits and all. Fancy. All right, we're going to get into a break. We're going to come back and speak about what is the fourth generation up to and so much more after the break. Just take a Welcome back to the show. So this line of lawyers is one thing. But uh, I want to ask the elder sister, when your brother decided to enter politics, what was your, what was the family's opinion on it? They were not very happy about it. I knew it. One and only son. Yes. Yeah. Third generation yeah. lawyer. And he's very good at his job. Didn't want. Didn't want. Ha so how did the convincing happen? His persuasive skills worked. He used law. He, he used law. And they gave in. <coughs> no, I was fortunate my father was the High Commissioner in London at that time. Okay. So he was finding it difficult to persuade me from that day not to do politics. So uh, I think that was the added advantage at that point of time. Right. Uh, you were going to contest in mayor? No, there are people wanted me to contest it as mayor, but then I thought at this point of time I opted not to. So, I mean, there were a lot of people who wanted me to contest as mayor. But do you feel that's a better pathway than getting into parliament? No, I definitely want. I will hopefully be in parliament next time. This time, the Rajapaksas cut me from the national list, even though my party nominated me. So, I, hereafter, I have, I've learned my lesson and I'll never come on the national list hereafter. Hmm. It's a tricky business to be in. Anyway, national list is a favour, never the reason. No, but Dano, <laughs> that's not so because people who need to contribute to the country have to be on the national who, list. Who can't, who, who are not interested in doing grassroots politics, correct, should be on the national list. But then, unfortunately, all parties generally appoint their political cronies who have failed to win elections in the national list. So that's what I said. Yeah. It's all favours. It's it's a bit of a, it's all set before they sort of announce it's that. A, it's a drama. Yeah, it's bad as the skill level is what defines a seat. Unfortunately, the they put list. a colourful set of names, but the ones who go go in generally are the people who are defeated. You all represent, you all are the Muslim community, I'm asking, because we don't have a lot of girls coming in who are who coming forward and doing very, very bold things out there. 
because they feel that we have to be conservative. Is that still there? That has changed. That has no. changed a lot. That a lot, lot of people are calling, a lot of lot girls of are qualifying now. And coming out. A yeah. lot of lawyers Don't who are women. If I can interrupt, if you take even the medical profession or the legal profession, we have Muslim women <coughs> who have done very well in recent time. That conservative approach has moved. Mm. Muslim women are more conservative than the rest. But while keeping our traditional values, you see Muslim women achieving great heights. And so thriving. I think that perception that Muslim women are conservative, yes. But then with regard to the academic and professional skills, you take finance, you take law, you yes. take medicine. You think, I think uh, we have broken that barrier. Uh, now, beyond Colombo, where people are more very home oriented, do you think the culture is changing there? I think the culture is changing because yeah. today, if you take Muslim women, they are they're focusing a lot on education, even more than Muslim women, because we are a trading community. If you take the number of that is true. Muslims who enter Uni, I would say there are more women than men because mm. Uh, we are a trading community and you see even those conservative families, the women have taken to education. Yeah. Now, recently I went for a convocation. 98% mm. were women, Southeastern University. That's amazing. Because I personally feel more and more representatives from the female, uh, the female force is very, very important mm. because there's an element of empathy that comes with it, That's true. which can never be given or even portrayed by a man and it's just not in our DNA so it's there's something so amazing that can be contributed and also I feel like because of all these cultural norms we feel whether it's right whether it's too much am I speaking all these have come down and also like modern thinking families like y'all set examples for a lot of people to be inspired and like giving that freedom so it's it's lovely to see. Unfortunately Dano there is a perception when a Muslim woman covers her head that she's conservative. And that she's suppressed. But, That's not so. but, but our cultural values are very important to us. I always have this to say, as, woman, as much as a woman can wear the shortest possible dress and reveal much, most part of her body, a woman is entitled to cover as much as she wants. Yes. So unfortunately, it should not be judged. True. Muslim women are judged to be conventional, backward, by the way we dress, but I think Muslim women have a right to protect their religious belief and their culture, but that should not be construed as being backward. Yes, I did a, recently did a case. Mm. This is about a teacher in Kurunayagala, right. and she was asked to remove her hijab, the mm. veil, and she refused, and we filed a fundamental rights application, mm. and it was settled some time ago. Right. And also recently there were some other issues about wearing the trousers with the uniform and mm. things like that but things are a lot better now yeah well there's always going to be one or two people who are going to think in the most narrow way possible and create problems but i think every religion every culture should be celebrated for what it is That's true. and that is what makes us diverse and nice in some way or the other I think unfortunately Dano, sri lanka has forgotten that unity through diversity is the key correct to see any western country they are progressive because it's unity through diversity. Here, some want to want everybody to be like them. Correct. That which shouldn't I, be the case. Which should not be the that case. That shouldn't be the case. Exactly. All right, we're going to get into a segment, and this is titled Hot Seat. I'm sure you know what it means. <coughs> Let's get into that. <laughs> Coughed his way out of it. Sorry. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. So it's time that we ask some very unpleasant, you know, pleasant questions. Now, some of this is directed to the man who has witnessed the big house. Yes. Some are for the three of you. All right, we had to merge everything through. And also, you know, y'all don't fall into the real gossip sections, you know, so can't brag y'all down that path. Y'all walk away with a gift bag from Crystal Luxury Wellness. All right, here we go. <laughs> I said this to you, and of course all of you all can answer, but I'm asking from him. Who in your opinion should be held accountable for the Easter Sunday attacks in 2019? RW, Maitri Pala Sirisena, Sri Lankan Intelligence, all of the above. I don't think you can point the finger at any, any one of them, Dano. Easter Sunday 
was, was committed by terrorists, misguided youth who caused a calamity and who are responsible. If you take the 9-11, then the, you should blame the US president for being liable. There are security lapses in all systems, and there are intelligence lapses. So I don't think you can pinpoint at any particular person for being culpable. So I would say, Danu, let's not talk about who is to blame. There was a lapse in our system. We need to get our act together and see that such an incident doesn't occur in the future. I agree. OK. Someone you wish were back in parliament, Mervyn Silva. Ravi Karunanayaka, Duminda Silva. I don't like to comment. I'm a politician, Danu. I don't like to comment when you mention names, right? Okay. I, I, I don't wish for any particular person coming to parliament, not coming to parliament, because right. being, being, being part of the system, I, I, I generally don't comment on others, Danu. So I would like to pass that question. Okay. Ravi Karunanayaka. Can I ask you, who would you like to come? No, this is my show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to teaching and asking the students questions. Who would you like? I'm asking you. No, oh, I have no answer. This is me dodging the question. <laughs> right. If the following people were to be doing other jobs, what sort of jobs would you recommend for them to do? Geeta Kumara Singh. Geeta Kumara Singh, she was an actress, so other than being a politician, she, she, I would say she was a great actress. I agree. I agree. Uh -oh. Oh, before my time. <laughs> She's quite there still. <laughs> Banu Garaj Baksa. Who was Banu Garaj Baksa? <laughs> I'm sorry, I stood up. <laughs> I, I was looking at the Quick both of <laughs> He's a cricketer. Uh, you should have said that. I mean, I there are so many Banuka Rajapaksa. I thought you yeah. were referring to the political arena. There is no yeah. Banuka Rajapaksa there. <laughs> sorry. Well, I think sorry, he, sorry, needs, sorry, he sorry. needs a bit more advertisement. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Harin Fernando. Harin Fernando is doing well as a minister. He's doing very well as a minister. He's young. He's doing he's an amazing job. And I think uh, we need young, young blood in the system. Alternative job? This is just a hypothetical question. That you should ask him. I'm not there to there to recommend <laughs> alternative jobs to persons. It's I, a hypothetical situation. No, end of the day, I, I don't know his other capabilities, Tano. I think he's doing such a good he's job. I can't imagine him doing anything else. Okay, Sajid Premadas. He's a leader of the opposition. So I don't know what other job he could do. So that's, uh, I mean, I, I'm, unfortunately, I have never done politics or never commented about others. So it may be uh, a minus in your show, but <laughs> I'll leave it to him. No, no, it's okay. This is a, this is a plus in a different yeah. way. You all don't want to come in. No, it's be no. before your time. No, no, he's at my time. He's at my time. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the better lawyer? The m the mother or the uncle? Both are equally good. I have to go home. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think they're they're very different approaches, but they're equally good. I think on their feet, very very good. If not for this profession, what other profession do you think would suit you the best? I think I did law because that was the easiest thing to pass. I don't really. Think, yeah, I think that was the only reason I did law. <laughs> not that I wanted to be a lawyer or anything. I, I just thought, look, law is the easiest thing to pass, but, but the most difficult, difficult thing to practice. to practice. So I thought the easiest vocation to get into. I was not a very good student either. But, Danu. But law has a lot of memorizing and... Not really. Not it's, really. it's all about common sense and how you approach it. To analyze. And you to be articulate. Yes. So. Right. For you? Ah, well, you've chosen lecture. the other profession. I've chosen the other Your profession. Your teaching has gone into... I must say, I'm going to give this to the uncle for the only reason he took the initiative to answer everything. You okay. just passed. <laughs> the sister agreed. <laughs> so, the brother wins. Okay. Congratulations. We are getting into a break. We'll see you on the other side. Welcome back to the show. I must say, hard to win an argument with three lawyers in the house. It is a task, I'm telling you. I normally they say that I have a big mouth, but you all have bigger mouths. <laughs> uh, let's speak about home life. How is it? Like, when you all 
leave the titles, when you all leave the professions back and go home. How are you all at home? We are a close knit family. Okay. We support each other. Who annoys who the most? I think we are like any other family, right? Everybody annoys each other. Right. Everybody has their shares of the problem. Everybody has their share yes. of bickering. So I think we are and no different if from now. we go none. on a trip, all four generations go, go. together. So it's very difficult to coordinate a trip. <laughs> <laughs> very difficult. So it's very hard to organize a trip to go. Very difficult to organize And all a of trip. your schedules should clear yes, up. Yes, very difficult. In this journey where we come across so many people, we, we like, you know, we have so much of hate spoken, all of that. End of the day, what I asked was, you all are still a family and you all have the same emotions. Mum will feel for her, her son the same way. And politics is a dirty business. And when people misunderstand him or speak bad about him, because they can, because he's in the public eye, and they're like, okay, just speak about him. And you'll hear those or you'll read those. How has it been for you as a sister? How has it been for you as, you saw him as your mali? But That's right. it's different in the public eye. Actually, we are very close and I've always felt responsible for him. So it's a bit difficult at times, but I've got used to it over the years. Can I just interrupt? My mother mm. cries when she sees some shit about me, sorry. But at the time, I think my mother, my sister, mm. all of them have got immune to it. And there's yeah. no so, point defending. So, I mean, True. end of the day, I mean, Every media will say what they want. Mm. And at the end of the day, you are still her son. She doesn't care what you are when you step but out of that house. But she prays so hard mm. that he doesn't do politics. I think my mother <laughs> has become so religious, thanks to me, because she's so worried about, <laughs> worried about politics, <laughs> about my safety. So <laughs> I think she's... She's permanently praying. She's permanently, permanently praying. praying. And, I, and I think she's permanently praying, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah, because, you know, sometimes we always underestimate when we speak bad about someone or even when, when a public personality has done something, we really go to town with them. That's true. But whereas we tend to forget that they have a home, they have family, they have children, they have brothers and sisters. But even the questions you asked me about certain politicians, I mean, a normal person would have answered, yes, yes. which would hurt the sensitivity of another person. I have always respected the individuals <laughs> these are freedom. hypothetical no, questions but <laughs> these hypothetical questions can hurt can cause hurt to another hypothetical yeah hypothetical <laughs> so i feel why should i contribute to hurt and that has been my political journey and i've never criticized commented on another because i don't think that is unfortunately what you've seen about in politics each man shouting and criticizing each other and i want to be that differentiator and i will be uh, what are your thoughts on a new new era of politicians coming forward? Because I think the country has spoken and they have been very vocal about I think it. You, I think that's a very interesting question. We had politicians who carry children, who hit a person's stomach, popular politicians who people clap. But first time, I'm not trying to hold a brief for the President Rani Vikramasinghe, country decided we need an intelligent man to take us out of this crisis. The, His Excellency the President is not the most popular president in the sense he's not a, nobody would say he's, he's, a, he's a populist. But mm. people realized if yes. not for him, today we would have no electricity. Definitely. We would have no was... gas, people would have starved. So first time, I feel there is space for people like us also because the, the country spoke up and said, That's we have right. an intelligent man who's trying to save us. Very so we're moving from politicians who carry children, mm. who pat on one's back and become popular. Mm. Only he could have done it. Mm. And, and, having, um, and having educated people in the big house That's is so important, important because one, it represents our country. And his number wife two, is so dignified. Mm. And number two, it sort of defines what our country's future is going That's to be right. when you have people like that. Zuli? Yes. <laughs> I'm just waiting and seeing how it'll go. <laughs> <laughs> it's too early. I want to see how. It plays out a little yeah. longer. But have you all, have, I'm sure you would have got opportunities to fly abroad, maybe settle down, especially when 2019 happened, when, when soon after COVID, when everything started, did everyone say, you know, why don't you just settle down there? Because a lot of people are leaving. And I did spend a good part of my life away. 
and I feel that I rather eat butter and paripu in darkness in Sri Lanka than be away from family. I think at the end of the day, for me, I rather be home mm. and then being anywhere else. For me, that meant more. That meant more. Nothing Way like Sri Lanka. Nothing like home. Uh, on that note, we have a game and it's called Yes or No. It's a very simple thing, but uh, this has a very deeper meaning to it, we have realized. You tend to understand way more than just the words. We'll see you on, with that on the other side. Should say a big thank you to our friends at Dialogue Power Plan for making this segment possible, or where the game goes very simply. Just answer it with a yes or a no. Here we go. Never have I ever pretended to be on the phone just to avoid a person. Be honest now. There. Good boy. <laughs> Good. Never have I ever left missed calls as it is. No. Always return. Wow. Yes. Yes, I am of course a big yes. <laughs> I'm sure you'll vouch for it. <laughs> I can never lie. <laughs> People know. Uh, never have I ever used someone else's toothbrush by mistake. Yeah. Many times. Many times, me too. My sister has thrown so many. I'm like, Akka, is yours green? No, I don't know. <laughs> then everything goes. <laughs> Never have I ever lied while playing a game. Sorry, yes. <laughs> I've cheated. I've My sister's eternally crying. I always cheat. You look like that type <laughs> who will bully your way out of it. Um, <laughs> Uh, never have I ever binge watched an entire series in one day. Really? Queen Charlotte, Bridgerton. Ah, that's five episodes, right? That. I watched Suits that. by not going to work for three days. <laughs> it's still on your line, so <laughs> it makes sense. Uh, Never have I ever spoken to someone on the phone for over an hour. Girlfriends, crushes. This one is slightly lifting <laughs> so that the father and the mother won't see. I don't know, Ma. I don't know whether I've ever have spoken to anyone. Never have I ever laughed so hard that I have spilled out the drink I drank. No, no. No, okay. Never have I ever intentionally started a fight between my siblings. Yes, good job. Yes, yes. Well, well done. Never have I ever been <laughs> tempted to Shoplift. No. Please quickly said no. No, no, no. no. <laughs> okay. Never have I ever restarted my phone because my phone does not work when I want it to. Yeah. I've used it as a great excuse. It's stuck. Never going to work. All right, so uh, congratulations. Thank you, all three of you win prizes from me for being honest. Now he's already checking his phone whether it's working or not. How many calls do you all get for a day? Several. Yeah. Do you switch it off at some point no, in your I life? No, I don't. No, I don't. Oh, you have no choice. No? I have you? no choice. Never. Must be hard, no? But you have somebody to assist you all? Yes. Do I you? used to when I was in parliament, but now yeah. I have managed it on myself. But I get about two to 300 calls a day. I don't know how you squeeze this show in. Well done. I think you're doing it most for the, mostly for the knees, no? I'm, yes, really, yes. I, I'm here for my knees. That's right. Thanks, you're I'm just perfectly chopped liver. Right. Thank you, I feel <laughs> really important. All right, this segment is brought to you by Dialogue Power Plan, making your postpaid connections so much more interesting. I'm telling you, you have something called the data rollover. 
That is, you have not used all your data for this month. Why do you want to still pay the full amount when you can use that data the next month? You just carry it forward. How cool is that? And at the same time, if you want to get some data off someone, you can even do that. So this is where I become a pest to my sister because I made sure that she got this package so that I could be robbing all her free data. It's such a cool deal. And at the same time, if you want to come to know more details about this and how you can make your life so much more easy because when you have unlimited YouTube on your phone for just 120 rupees how cool is that you can just watch everything that you want and keep yourself entertained you want more details you can always log on to www.dialog.lk if not just get on to my dialogue for more details let's get into our segment dish the dirt All right, so one of the reasons I wanted to speak about this particular topic with the three of you, y'all are leaders in your own right. Y'all have a lot of people who look up to you. Uh, in 2019, when this whole country saw people as enemies for the, for the act that happened, uh, the Easter bombing, even like people who we have tingle mingled in our society with just turned against each other saying, oh my God. And I was thinking to myself, oh my God, these are people who you have shared a meal with and had great fun with. And it was quite personal for me for the only reason that's how we were seen till 2009 uh, in terms of the war. And every time a police will stop us, uh, if your birthplace said Jaffna, you were questioned more and asked for a police report. And you always wondered, the last thing I want to do is be this face to keep a bomb somewhere. Uh, but how was it for you, especially being a known family? You all might have had so many people calling you all or even turning their backs on you. <coughs> how did you all handle it? Dano, after the Easter Sunday attack, some of my close friends also looked at us in a different way. Some of them asked, didn't you all know about this? To that extent. And also, hate against the Muslim community grew. They tried to blame us as a community. And I was asking them why. I mean, a few misguided youth yeah. caused this situation. And you are trying to blame the entire community. Two, mil two million Muslims who live in this country. Mm. But it, it happened to the Tamils as well when the of LTT course. fought the war. Some trying to brand every Tamil as a terrorist. This, it happened to us, but then gradually, with time, people, become, they be, uh, people realize that every Muslim is not a terrorist. Mm. But the shock, the anger, the hatred, was toward, the wrath was towards our community. Mm. But it was unfortunate, but with it, time, could y'all do such a and thing? And some I mean, used this as a, as a political tool. It was hmm. very hard. So, I, sorry. The racist used this to, to incite, incite against a community to become leaders of the community. You hmm. take Dr. Shafi's incident. They went to the extent saying that he cut the palapinian tube so that Sinhalese can't give birth to children. Then you it's had ridiculous. people like Azad Sali yes. who was taken in. Hijaz, That's why when you, Hijaz, Hijaz, Hijaz is pulla. So, I mean, Two, three hundred youth, thousands of Muslim youth were taken in. So there was a major anti-sentiment campaign. Against and Gotabe Rajapaksa, during his presidential campaign, used racism to become the president of this country. In terms of generations, your generation is different to your mom's and definitely different to your yes. father and your mom. How was it in all three generations? Now, I went to a ladies' college. Yes. I had no problem. I went to... Uh, no, I'm saying when this problem happened, your age... My age group, most yeah. of my friends were sympathetic, actually. They were very okay. nice. And how I was had it no for the problem. younger? I think my generation is much more well-read. So I feel... We were not quick to judge because we have communicated okay. in a more... But then open. when you look at social media, Sorry. It, didn't, it didn't matter. The yes. age didn't matter. I mean, we, can, we could say, no, because when the political leadership, when, if you look at social media at that time, the inciting against the Muslim community was so much, they told not to purchase anything from a from Muslim, a Muslim shop. shop. That if you go to a Muslim uh, shop, right, if you go to a changing room, they'll do something to see that your 
that you can't have children. And not to retain a Muslim not, lawyer. Yeah, so not to go. So lots of things like that happen, mm. Dano. But then when things change, you know, the irony I used to always tell my sister, the same country that told everyone remove your scarves, remove your face, they had mask. To wear the niqab. They had to wear the they mask to, mask, to cover mask. everyone. They had to wear the mask. Less than yes. like few months. From and now. also right. Dano, the leader who said all that, who preached and incited, had to leave and run abroad. I mean, there is a God above, Dhanu. The man who thought he can incite others and try to propagate mm. a political platform based on race and religion was rejected by the single community as says, well. Yeah, and he had to he had to take a flight and jump and leave the country. Are, he is the only sitting president who resigned without finishing his term. So, and he was rejected. He first thought by inciting against the Muslims and the Tamils, he could be the so-called singular leader. That didn't but, happen. But unfortunately, or for, and fortunately for the country, all three communities says, please go. And he, even, even in the history, have we had a leader who had to run and flee? But uh, do you feel right now the tension against the minority communities it's in our less. country? It's reducing? I think it's uh, reducing. because, uh, Danu, we have whatever anybody can say against this president. He's a very secular leader. Everybody has their issues. But President Ranil Vikramasinghe, he has lost elections also being secular. And whatever we say, he will not sacrifice his principles for political advantage. So I believe he believes in projecting Sri Lanka differently. And also, he is for a secular Sri Lanka. And that is one thing we, we can look forward to. And the intelligence of this country can have hope after after the after you look at how the people want him to be president and people feel very secure now hmm. they feel very safe i think there's a lot less hate uh, in terms of religious leaders having opinion and verbally saying it openly saying it um, what is your take on what what should religious institutions preach and how should they add to community and not disturb the community peace and unity that should be taught i think religious leaders should only preach religion. Unfortunately, religious leaders tend to get involved no, in political and social issues, which is not their, not part of their functions. And that has caused major problems. We all parties use religious leaders for their political advantage. And they, they use them for their political Gains. Gains. That happens, and that has happened. I think mm. it's important that state and religion should be kept apart. apart. Yeah. And I think a new new wave of new politicians, modern thinkers who are educated, well rounded, yes. who have had friends from all ethnicity. That's right. uh, it adds value to a well rounded, secure parliament that will make decisions for the future of this country. And also Danu, I to take the Sinhala community at large. They are one of the they are the most compassionate yes. community. Mm. And very tolerant. Right? So, so, Buddhism is based on Maitri and Karunava. Yeah. But certain politicians try to take it away. Mm. But we, I don't think anywhere in the world you have a community like the Singhala community who, reach out, re, who reaches out towards other community yeah. and who believes in living in harmony. Correct. So, I think we are blessed to live in, in a Singhala Buddhist, majority Singhala Buddhist country because you and I, Dano, we don't feel inferior of because they feel as the majority of them make us feel Sri Lankans. And the number of mosques that you get in Sri yeah. Lanka? That is true. It's always one or two people. That's where the worm starts. Uh, let's get into a break. Thank you for that wonderful segment. Uh, it was so insightful. And it's nice to hear it from people who are change makers. Uh, let's get into a break. We'll see you right after this. Our final segment on Date with Danu, speaking to this very law-abiding family. <laughs> no choice. Uh, asking you, now you teach kids. Yes. <laughs> Are they different to the time when you went to school? Because that kind of approach is long gone. Those of you who even go to for tuition classes feeling scared. We are paying them and getting more scared because we have to deal with them as well. I think now the teachers are much more interactive and engaging. 
than before. So I think the kids now enjoy studying with us. Yeah, and they don't uh, they don't believe in respect being demanded, no? No, we're more like friends now. So a lot of my students follow me on Instagram, mm. I follow them back. It's a very interactive relationship with the students. I think that helps create a bond. So I feel a lot of my students, um, they study because they don't want to disappoint me or my lecturers. Mm. So I think so that's that like a personal bond. That personal bond. Yeah. So even just now, before I came on my students, he sat for the paper and he called me and he thanked me and he said, Miss, I didn't want to upset you mm. and thank you so much. So it's like a personal bond, personal. which is so much more nicer. Uh, little thing that you will not know about uh, Mr. Mustafa, who's seated there, he's a bit of a fashionista. Uh, but unfortunately, due to his job, he needs to be in two colors. Uh, but uh, do you experiment your vibrancy when you go out? for parties and things like that? No, Danu, I always look at you and I wish that I would be as adventurous as you. I'm a very sober, the way I dress. We just need to add some party into your life in the wardrobe area. <laughs> maybe, maybe I should come and inspect your wardrobe very more. Very oh my vain. God, it's... He's very vain. Very vain. Ah, very really? Vain. How do you mean very vain? No, I'm not very vain, but he's I believe vain. that he's you should, vain. You he should dress... Wow. I don't do facials. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. It's good. It's very, very important. No, but I, I believe that you should be very well groomed. You should be well groomed. And also, age is just a number. I believe that you Definitely. should. Definitely. But I, I like the whole 100%. fact that you have left the whole, you know, the fox look going. <laughs> <laughs> the silver fox look. <laughs> but that's a problem because people think that he's very old. And being the older sister, they think that I'm Yeah, ancient. you have colored it black as black. <laughs> That's a big problem. <laughs> so that's always it's always the case, and don't worry. It's just he's 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 just maintaining the looks. Uh, but in terms of if you could have, if there was a chance for you to do another like a career path, if you could rethink, what would you pick? Mm, I, I think there's such a creative side to you. I I don't know. I mean, I would like fashion. Yeah, I'm I also designing think so. fashion. I would like to be a fashion designer. I also think so. I always want to do people laugh. Uh, but I think uh, I love being creative as well. Yeah, I think that. And I, would have, I, I could have designed your wardrobe because yes. I'm not adventurous. <laughs> as so you could have had worse things on me. <laughs> <laughs> when people find the most atrocious colors, they're like, oh, Danu, you can wear this. No? So I always tell my friends. Anything looks good on you, Danu. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, God Honestly. has not blessed us with the same good looks you have, Danu. So. You can pull anything off. Yes. Anything looks anything. good. Anything. Excuse me, Charit. Please loop that segment. <laughs> put it from start to end. <laughs> I don't need anything else on this. Thank you. Thank you. It's been an honor having all of you. I am telling you, I'm so happy. Those last few words were great. <laughs> Thank you so very much. I must say, uh, it's great to see a family that's so united. I've always loved families that celebrate big festivals together, Christmases together, parties together. It's always nice. Uh, when there is a family event, there's some buzz that's together, true. no? And uh, I unfortunately have a very small family, but it's nice to have a big family. And I'm so happy. I, I wish you guys all the happiness and all the love that you all deserve. Thank you so much for being here and being on the show and being so transparent in the conversation. Uh, thank you, Uncle. Thank you. Thank you, Danu, for having us. Mother and daughter for being here. Absolutely loved having you. All right, on that note, we need to wrap things up on Date with Danu. We'll see you soon once again. Till then, you keep smiling. It's a wrap. Thank you.